Hi everyone, this is your Chess Puzzler and a very warm welcome to the channel. This is a very controversial video on Bobby Fischer and the so-called games he played on the web dating back to 2001. An article was published by the BBC claiming Fischer was not seen for nearly a decade, came out of the blue and started to challenge people online. One such online player Fischer was said to have challenged was Nigel Short, who was adamant his opponent was indeed the legendary Bobby Fischer. Short said he was 99% convinced this was Fischer. But since the two never really met in the flesh, there is plenty of controversy about who Short was really playing. Was this Fischer or was it somebody else using a chess engine and pretending to be Fischer? Nigel was always convinced he was playing against Fisher because he asked him a question about a player who which Fisher knew the answer to. But what Nigel asked him, anyone could answer, and especially if you have a search engine at hand. Whether this was Fisher or not, Short lost all eight games they played in 2001. I will try and bring them out to you. And we'll be looking at the probability of Short most likely playing against an engine. Nigel said he was crushed and that his rival went for highly irregular openings by pushing his soldiers square by square, not even a grandmaster would ever go for. I would like to introduce game six of eight, and I will call Nigel Short's rival Bobby Fisher even though this may not have been Fisher, I will let you judge for yourselves. This was a blitz internet game with Fisher starting up with the white pieces and going for F4. Short responded with D5 and already from move two, Fisher comes up with the most outrageous of moves. King to F2. There was plenty of talk at the time and whether this was a hoax or not. The news was out and many people began to talk. Short replied with knight c6. And if that king on f2 was not provocative enough, Fisher goes on and moves him again to f3. Now, if you run a search on this opening, you're probably going to waste your time because there is no one out there who's going to get the king to f2 and then move him again to f3. Now, this is the first time you see the king come out without any real backing, but Fisher, or our soul called Fisher, did this in other games too, and by now, Short was getting adjusted to such crazy moves. Short rushed off his soldier to e5, and now c3. Taking this soldier in f4, would have led to a very, very funny situation because if the king takes, this is in fact game over. Now, other people commented on this game and no one was able to see this continuation. Do you want to pause just to work this one out? If so, do it now and continue when you're ready. If you need a push, just get the queen in with a check. And wherever this king goes, he's dead meat. A king move to f3 is going to get the knight jumping in with a fresh check. And now, with the king finding the only legal square on the board, the knight can come in again with another check. And now, whatever you choose to play, you will be over and done with. King d3, for example leads to a head-on collision with the big lady and that is going to be one painful quick type of death. If you opt for the other direction, a queen check on f6 is now going to push the king to the only square available. But after this bishop fires off from this square on d6, all avenues of escape are now blocked and this is what Nigel missed. If only you took on f4, this game could have ended in just 
under 10 moves. Now, does this tell us if Short was playing against an engine? No, but certainly in a very fast game, the engine may play out the first move it sees or the first move it calculates. Coming back after c3, Nigel went for knight of six and Fisher pushed forward yet another soldier, preventing, or a better word, challenging black to take f4 because the bishop can now recapture very easily. Short here went for bishop e7 and Fisher double covered his piece on f4. After castles, the king came back and Nigel here pushed on with e4. Fisher responded with d4, trying to lock in the position. Nigel replied with a very interesting h5, and in turn, Fisher closed up entirely through this e3 move. The game continued with g6, h3, and now king g7 to allow the rook some maneuverability. Fisher replied with c4, and after rook g8, and now c5, Short went for a third consecutive rook move. So, in other words, Short was just sitting back and waiting for Fisher to come up with something. After a relatively weak knight to c3, we saw bishop e6, a3, queen d7 to connect the rooks, and now Fisher's first move in the game that does something. He pinned the knight but Short ignores this move completely and gets the A rook closer into the action. The game continued with B4 and now the king returned to F8 just to make room for these two rooks to do something interesting. Fisher retreated his bishop to possibly allow this B soldier to progress and while one player is trying to break through on the queen side, the other is focusing on the king side Short pushed on with g5. The exchange here on g5 is going to cause Fisher plenty of headache because nearly all of Short's pieces are directed towards the white king and this can't be good for white. Particularly weak is g3 and should he fall it will be very hard for white to defend. Since Fisher was already busy on the queen side he pushed on with b5, sending the knight back to the 8th rank, and now b6 was forthcoming. Before going for this move, he got this knight to e2, because he probably anticipated what Short was up to. I lost count as to how many times this rook in particular moved back and forth, but even when the rook came in on g8, this fella here was quite secure and this is all because of the knight move to e2. Remember that b6 move we talked about a second ago? This came up exposing the queen and black has now two options. One, to move the queen out to c8, or two, push this fella here to block. Short went for this second option, and as a result, Fisher took and now creates an extremely dangerous situation, being just a single move away from queening. And now, whether he likes it or not, Short has only one response. He got the queen back to c8 to cover, if anything else, this very dangerous square on a8. Bishop b3 got the queen in on a8, and this soldier now can no longer be saved. After rook b1, queen takes, Rook f1 and queen back to a8. It looks black is a bit tied up, but maybe worse is white right now, because now none of his pieces are able to freely go anywhere. The bishop on c1 right now is acting as a defender for a3. The bishop on b3 is completely off sight. The knight on e2 is as good as paralyzed. And don't let me get started on these two rooks and I really don't know who is better off right now. And I'm not talking about what side is better, but what rook is better, because there is no doubt as to what side has an advantage. 
mind you, both sides have all the major and minor pieces still intact and everything is possible. Only one side has far less chances with this very position you see on the board. What White wants to do is to move out his knight to f4, but this is not yet possible because White needs to defend g3. Once g3 drops, things will get very difficult, if not impossible. Fischer, or a Fischer imposter, came up with a queen move to e1, just to allow the knight to flee to this f4 square. But it wasn't too much about what Fischer came up with, but how Short responded. He went for this queen move to c8, asking Fischer to come in with something to cover h3. Now, White has two ways to cover h3. One is to get the rook back to h1, and two is to jump the knight on f4. Having gone for this second option, Shaw grabbed the opportunity to take with a check, forcing basically the two rooks off in exchange for the queen and this soldier, of course. Nigel here wanted to retain his bishop on e6 and got him out of danger by pushing him forward by one square. I'm going to return to this move because I believe there is something much better here. The only thing I need is to just remember to come back to this point. So let me make a mental note of this right now. After bishop d1, the knight joined in the party. Fischer did not engage, and why should he when he could grab h5? But did he go for this move in the end? Yep because the exchange earned him something he lost when his queen came off. Short came up with his knight move to g7, but again, I will need to revisit this point at the very end, because there is a much better move in this position. This move of the knight to g7 automatically covers this bishop from the rook, and now attacks the bishop on h5. Backing off the bishop led to the removal of both of these minor pieces. If we stop to evaluate, any ideas on what side is better? I'm not sure myself, but I would choose the black pieces unless I'm sure I can join up my rooks. A long range queen check got the king to step back, and now with 96, with one idea in mind, and looking to lock into this f3 outpost. Fischer went for a bishop move to join up the rooks, and right after we saw a subsequent knight jump, we knew this square on f3 is all black needed. Bishop e1, the move Fischer went for, or any other move, can never prevent the knight from coming into this f3 square, and this very move now forces white to go basically for only one response. Just to stop for now the queen from penetrating him with a mate. And if that was not dangerous enough, the queen stepped up the pressure and now went for g4. King g3 need not be explained. Short here returned the bishop to the 8th rank with only one idea in mind, which we shall undoubtedly see very shortly. After knight e2, Nigel decided to go for a check and Fischer uses the knight to block. Now Fischer has a very strong knight on f3, but what does the knight actually do? Short repositioned the queen to e7, and on purpose keeps this fella unprotected, and this is the whole idea behind it. Should you grab b7, we know that would be it for white, because he only needs to come in with a simple check, and then voila, this rock here, would be the biggest gift of the day. Fischer moved this bishop out to this c3 square just to keep the knights at bay. In fact, the only place his knight can go is where? Here to g5. Not a very interesting place to put him anyway. Nigel gave it a try, but since Fischer was not taking b7, he went on and exchanged his bishop for the knight on f4. I don't think Fischer had much of an option on how to recapture. 
because if you use your king, there is a nasty check on g5. Pushing back the king to g3, once e3 drops, black has all sorts of easy moves. White recaptured using this guy here, and this is actually the only way to recapture. Nigel got his king out of any potential checks, and here Fisher, having most of his pieces tied up, went for a4. After queen c7, the rook came in on b6, and there was still plenty of stuff going on, not only because of the availability of the two rooks versus the queen, but also the presence of this bishop and the knight. If you check out the knight though, he's basically held hostage on this f3 square only because of this bishop on c3. Short carried on with f6, and this is in fact the move that killed him off really, and we are going to see why and how. Well, for starters, he now allows his rook to get behind his brother, and once b7 drops, he not only drops, but the queen is in danger, and many nasty things are going to happen. And this is exactly what happened. Fisher lined up the rooks, and now short, rushed to move his king out of any pin. Fisher went on and removed this guy, and now the queen was placed on d8, and way out of danger. And here, if short gets a chance, he would have loved to get his queen to the edge of the board to be able to create a counter-attack, but already with this position reached, it was too late. There is one way to finish off from here very fast, and once you find the one move you're looking for, the rest is like you pull the trigger and the bullet is on its way to the target. And I will give you the chance to have a crack at this. So here we go in two, one, and pause. F5 is our first move. And whether you place your king on H6 or G5, you are as dead as a dodo. And only here you will get to know the meaning of this, just in case you didn't know. Dodo was a native bird of Mauritius that was hunted to extinction because it was unable to fly. And this is where the phrase dead as a dodo comes from. Let's go for this king move to h6 first. Well, this one is very easy now. Rook h1 check, king g5, and of course, rook h5. And what a way to mate the king. Black could prolong the mate by stepping first to the knight in on h4 but we're going to see the same result when the rook takes this knight, forcing another king to g5, and there we go once again. And now let's try the second method, and this is what short went for. King g5, a rook check, king h6, rook g6 check, king h7, and now rook h1 check, and the mate follows after the knight blocks the check, but when this knight departs, black does too. And this is in fact how the game ended in favour of white. Do you think this was the legendary Bobby Fischer playing or not? This has been a very interesting game to say the least. And in fact, things could have been very different if Short was able to capitalise with a very easy win in just under 10 moves. I think I'm forgetting something, so let me fill in the gaps. Let me roll back to this move in the game. Short here moved this bishop to f5, but what if you went instead for this move and remove h3? Recapturing with this knight is going to finish you off because once the queen steps in with a check, or we can do one better than this a check on h4, and now white cannot take h4 because he will be mated when the queen gets in on g4, and it's game over. So this leaves open king h2, but even here you can go for this knight check on g4, and once the king lands on h1, simply grab e3 and his job done. This knight on e3 is such a poisonous knight, 
you don't want to know. What we do know is that this knight must get back. And what we know is that when this rook is arrested, the game is over. I hope you enjoyed this very controversial game and one that is going to remain a mystery for years to come, along with the seven other games that were said to have been played by Fisher. Until we have someone coming forward to claim responsibility, it is highly unlikely that this mystery man playing Nigel Short was Bobby Fisher himself. Until next time, this was your chess puzzler.